You too, what's up? It's your boy Sly Huncho, and I'm back with another video, Get another nice. transformation, another life saving. So, today we're gonna do a mid taper on my boy. As you can see, his hair is real thick, he's a medium hair waver. I'm saying we're gonna get them together. All right, so first I cut him down with a three guard. I'm saying I go with the way his hair grows. So if you get a client like this with this hair texture, I recommend going a big guard on their hair. I wouldn't go no lower than a two, but I like to keep his hair at a three because if I go any lower, his waves will not show. You can see me just still cutting with the way his hair grows. He's super wavy under there, you see that? Wait, it's deep? Then for the crown area, I like to use a fork close. I still go with the way his hair grows. With waivers, you want to use a bigger guard cutting down the crown because if you cut it down with the same length, it might be a little thin. So then I brush his hair and I go over it again just to clean up the wave some more. Going over it with a three guard again. And then I take my liners and I clean up his face and then I'm gonna set in my first guideline. I'm gonna set my first guideline and then round. It's gonna be kind of contour with the ear. So most of the time I set all my guidelines in first just so I won't have to pick up the liners again and I can just blend. So I set in that back guideline and I make it round. And then I go to the other side and I do the same thing, rounding out that guy line. And then I use a shaver just to give it a more bald effect. It's gonna help the blend pop more. So then I debulk first. So first, since his hair is so thick, I debulk with my three guard. Then I go and debulk with my two guard around the C cup area and around where the taper is gonna be. I want to debulk around that C cup part but still leave his hair thick because it will make the line crispier when I line it up and it's going to be easier to blend in the hair. So with my magic clips I'm taking the corner of my clippers and then I'm making my second guy line with no guard. Then I move my lever halfway and then I'm flicking out that line trying to blend it in. And then I close the lever. Then I'm going up with my one guard about a half an inch. And then this line right there is light enough so I can kick that out with my zero guard. Then I use my one and one half and I flick out that next line right there. When you blend in, you just wanna use your corners. You don't have to use the whole clipper because if you use the whole clipper, then you might hit some parts you don't wanna hit. And then I hit the neckline with a one and a half. So when I do this, it's gonna help me make the line crispier whenever I do line it up. And it's always good to go back over your work. So then I detail the rest of my work and I'm using my one guard, trying to get everything blended and blurry. So I use my cordless masters for detail work as well. I like to use the corner of those. It's easy to use and they help blend better. So when you get to the back of the head, the steps is basically the same. So you wanna debulk first. You wanna always make sure you're using that comb. So when you see barbers going down like this, after debulking, they're just laying down the hair. And then I go in with no guard. And then I blend in that line. I go halfway first. And then I hit the bottom with it closed. Then I go in with my one. 
and then I'm hitting that with it closed make sure I'm flicking up and then I'm taking my zero guard and blending that line out and then I'm using my one and a half for the next guy line So I like the way this blend is coming together. The taper is popping, it's blurry. So with medium hair wavers, their hair usually isn't too much hard work unless their hair grows different directions. You know what I'm saying, but usually the fades do pop. Well, the fades gonna pop on any haircut, but their haircut is easier to blend, I should say. Alright, so now we're getting ready to line them up. See, my client has a lot of overhang because his hair grew so long, so I knocked that down with a two. Alright, so for my line prep, I like to use shaving cream by Gillette. And I'm going to spread it across his hairline. Then I'm going to use my hot towel. You can check to see the temperature of the hot towel by putting it on your wrist. That's how you know if it's too hot or not, but you want to put it on his hairline for about 30 seconds to a minute. All right, so the holding spray I'm gonna use for his hair texture is Gossipy Glue. It's a stronger hold. It's gonna be easier to line up his hair texture using Gossipy Glue. Sometimes if you have straight hair clients or like medium hair waivers, their hair is harder to lay down so that's why I'm using that as you can see he does have a lot of overhang but I just start in the middle and work my way to the left side I'm trying to keep the line as natural as possible not pushing it back I like to use the middle screw as a reference point when I'm starting my C cup so I usually don't go past that So I line it up on the top first, then I start from the bottom and draw a C towards that line. As you can see, it's coming out nice and crispy. So when I'm lining them up, you can use this trick. I comb the hair out and then I line it up again just to make sure I get all the hair. Then I'm hitting that neckline, making sure I'm not digging in. And you always want to make sure you're hitting around the ear because that's a little detail that makes a big difference in the cut. So this next step isn't necessary, but you can use it to make your haircuts pop more. You can enhance that neckline. So I use the enhancements and then I go in with my brown pencil and then my white pencil. I use a brown and white pencil because his skin complexion, I don't want the brown pencil to not show up and I don't want the white pencil to be too white. So using both makes them blend in properly. And the enhancements that I'm using is dark brown by 245. I like to go in with my compressor first. Make sure I'm hitting all those corners, hitting the line, filling in any light spots. And then I like to go in with my dark brown topics because his hair is brown and it adds texture. His line is sharp. And I'm just brushing out any enhancements that didn't hit it. And then I'm using my holding spray, got to be a glue. But always make sure the corners are sharp because that's what's gonna make your haircut pop. Then I like to go over it with my brown pencil and then my white pencil, just like I did the neckline. You don't wanna put a thick line, you wanna make sure it's like a thin line because it's easier to blend in and the thick lines is kind of it's kind of not my style so that's why i do the thin lines but 
haircuts are in the perspective of a barber so if you want to do the thick lines you can it just wouldn't be that appealing to other people i think but i just go back over with my clippers blending in the pencil line and then i razor it to blend it in some more Then I put in pomade on his hair. You know I'm saying, I'm getting the waves nice and fresh and shiny. Then I use this tool right here to lay down the waves some more. You can use a plastic bag instead. Then I go over with my shears. Now we got the final results. YouTube, this is a mid taper, medium hair waver. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and I'm gonna be back with more videos. Get sliced.